even if you are not changing your job the job you are doing is changing industry now don't want people to take and train we want them to work on if possible on day one and if you want to become a successful leader you have to listen and you can create a team of successful people only when you have the heart courage and mind to listen to them manufacturing your luck manufacturing your luck i'll give you an example on this yeah please they'll surprise you on what they are he said okay but it is run by a complete gen z student and the senior citizens are loving it welcome to this podcast and first of all let me introduce all the guests on today's uh, podcast we have uh, coach ram no no author ram coach is fine for now coach ram, coach ram <laughs> as you know ram very well he's on everywhere wherever you are there and uh, big thanks to dr manish kothari for helping us oh, in organizing this podcast and uh, who do not know rajnikanth so rajnikanth uh, from film industry and is a rajnikanth from hr industry <laughs> yeah rajnikanth you from uh, is they they both are from the very senior hr folks who will be going to discuss and uh, make us learn about the deeper aspect of hr from the various aspect of hr so let me begin this conversation with dr manish uh, dr manish uh, let's talk something about uh, you know isbr So we will begin this, uh, you know, the entire uh, session, especially this podcast, uh, in and around HR, and mainly we will be going to discuss about the challenges in HR, what HR people are facing. So, Dr. Manish, share something about, you know, the first generation institute ISBR. Ah, oh, thank you, and uh, such an amazing thing. One, getting people uh, uh, of like-mindedness to come together and interact is one good thing. Second good thing my friend is doing is. connecting us to the external world and it's so necessary that we pass on what we have learned to the next generations and to the people who are watching this video so that they understand the deep intricacies of a company of the whole field of hr and moves ahead to learn as much as possible and i have seen the passion with which he is doing and thank you once again for bringing us together and uh, talking about things Uh, the first thing he has asked me to speak about is ISBR Business School. So ISBR Business School is one of a pioneer business school in Electronic City. We are one of the top ten schools when it comes to PGDM in Electronic City, Bangalore. We have more than ten thousand students who have graduated from us. We have a very unique PGDM program wherein a student's right from day one when he comes to the institution, he he works, gets hands-on experience on how to do things. interacts with corporates and then moves along everything we do in this institution isbr is in association and in partnership with institu- with uh, industries right from the curriculum we set mm-hmm. right from the students getting mentored right from the faculty who co teaches with industry so isbr has been a very unique institution in its own space we are nba accredited in its first attempt and let me tell you my friends there are only 3 percentage of institutions in the country that were accredited in their first attempts in the management area and not only that isbr has been platinum ranked by aict cii survey this is the only survey in the world which is jointly done by the industry and the education institutes together and it's been 7 years in a row that <coughs> isbr has been rated as platinum again till last 3 years they were only about 7 percentage of the institutions that were rated as platinum so that's isbr business school for you i mean there's so much i can tell you about isbr but then uh, please take your journey forward so i have a lot of questions for you which we'll i'll be going to ask in the later uh, part of the podcast looking forward yeah. uh now uh, coming to the very important topic the challenges in hr as uh, now hr has taken a front seat in the overall uh, organizational things and especially for developing and growing the organization in terms of helping the people to achieve their business goals right so we have coach ram coach ram is the chief learning officer uh, so ram share some lives on how things are changing uh, people were thinking earlier you know spending a lot of time with one organization now the thought has changed if you see the gen z if you see the even the millennials you know the way they are changing their mindset and other things attrition is one of the most important thing so what are the few factors you feel that that the hr need to take as an initiative great uh, 
Thanks Pankaj for uh, having me over. Uh, the famous quote that I like about uh, the current talent market is uh, even if you are not changing your job, the job you are doing is changing. Can you repeat it again? I would like to hear it out. Very right, very right. Uh, even if you are not changing your job, mm -hmm. the job you are doing is changing. So uh, right now we are in ISBR. Uh, if you look at how uh, MBA students were taught uh, five years ago to how they are being taught now, very different. So a professor here has to change. Similarly, even in corporate, anyone who is doing uh, a job, they cannot be doing it the same way. True. So uh, one needs to constantly learn, develop their skills. The shelf life of skills uh, is uh, becoming shorter and shorter. Earlier we used to quote, you know, uh, the top 20 companies 30 years ago are not in the list right now. Yeah. On in similar vein, now the top skills of 30 years ago are not at all top skills now. Those skills are taken over by AI, will be taken over by AI. We need a higher order skills. So constant learning and development, uh, constantly um, questioning yourself. And uh, one question that I uh, ask, that I would ask everyone to uh, reflect on, because I've seen leaders, you know, getting into their roles, spend few years, and then get comfortable in those roles. The question I ask them to reflect on is, if there was a successor to you, what would he do differently? And that makes makes us uh, relook at our ourselves completely, start afresh, start every day as they were, and that's what we say, right? And it's not about startup is not a. Um, these days, everyone says, you know, start every day as day one, yeah, because you are constantly changing, constantly evolving. So, in this kind of a uh, dynamic ecosystem, where skills need to be constantly updated. Um, customers experience uh, and expectations uh, is constantly uh, you know accelerating advancing people want things more and more convenient and hence in terms of backward integration how we make things simple for our customers uh, has to be uh, even more uh, evolving so in this kind of an ecosystem the role that HR has to play is uh, you know that's how I see that HR has become more and more important because capability building to meet uh, the needs of an organization that needs to operate differently every year. So HR plays a great role in terms of capability building, getting the right talent, able to attract the right talent, uh, build them and build an organization for the future. So uh, all around talent, uh, keeping the market in mind. So that, that's what I see is the uh, greater role of HR. Yeah, so um, there was a case study, uh, it's a Harvard case study which says that many students those are studying in the, <coughs> even the engineering colleges, right? right? So in the entire startup world, you know, they start uh, beginning something of their own from the first year, second year and the third year probably they take, you know, drop out. And because they see that, that more relationship with the business, they see that, that what is this being taught there in the colleges. Right, has very less relationship with what is what is market is really demanding. So to meet this this gap, what uh, education institute, maybe you know, uh, the engineering institutes or the management institute needs to take that that change. So Dr. Manish, you can throw some light on this. That how can be someone can be the industry focused here, right? So once the, the student is ready after his course or her course, you know, he'll be ready for the market. And any any organization or big corporate is happy to have that uh, person in the team. Yeah, I'm uh, thankful to what he said that if there you change the job or no, but the skill sets are changing. And that's very true. In fact, uh, there was a time that once you define a program structure, the program structure lives on for a decade. And education institutions used to continue with that program structure again and again, again and again, just like the cassette that you used to yeah. put and play. Things have changed. I mean, uh, forget the months and years. If we do not review our curriculum, say on especially in the field of HR, every semester once. I mean, we have we have doomed with the with the curriculum that we have. So, point number one, uh, where you said that how do we battle this out? See, earlier it was like institute used to prepare the candidates and then hand it over to corporates. the corporates and industries. Gone are the days. Now is the time the institute and the industry 
have to work together from day one, right from the time I am recruiting my student here at ISBR. A panel members has a person from industry, has a person from academia, has an alumni, and has the academic team on board. And this panel member decides whether the students will get into the course or no. Is the student and the course mapped properly? And only if they are mapped, they he gets in the course. He or she gets in the course. Now let's look at second. The designing of curriculum cannot happen unless and until I take the industry on board. So if the industry is not on boarded, the curriculum is not vetted by the person who is finally going to take the product. Knowledge can be given. Attitude can be given, but when it comes to skills, the industry has to vet it. That bhaiya, ye bacha hamare is position ke liye fit hoga. So what we have done is we have divided our whole curriculum into such that the skills part of it is vetted by the industry. Yeah, interesting you say that. Um, sorry to interrupt there. I have been yeah. asked, approached by a couple of universities, and uh, it was a proper uh, meeting that they you know went through. They walked, they walked us through the. Curriculum, what they have planned, and asked us to give our opinions, and then took our consent, saying, "Okay, this is good to go." So this seems to be a new requirement now that yes. you know yes. colleges need to get that stamp from corporate saying this is uh, conducive to what the market needs. Yes, and only when you get the seal, you move ahead with that curriculum for the students, with that program for the student. Now we don't stop here. The moment this program is designed together, mark my words, ah. Huh? The execution also has to be jointly done. Oh, oh! So at ISBR, what happens? I'll tell you. There is one academician who enters the class, and along with that, you have a co-teacher. We have started concept known as co-teaching. A person from the industry also works together. Now, you were very right. A student used to say that what I have learned before is not right when I go to the corporate. It's a mismatch. now no more of saying that when co teaching happens a person from the industry and a person from the academia teaches the course together so at present the percentage of academia and industry at isbr is about 60 40 which is very Quite good high. so the person from industry comes and gives his live cases to the students and the student solves it as he is a part of the class so this 40% is where uh, industry folks yes who are who have full time jobs take out their time and spend uh, yes. time with the college students yes Fantastic. people like you who mm. come and i mean you want to give back what a better way to give back mm. and people from industry has now accepted this model and have appreciated it now we don't stop here we have a six level of mentorship for the students i'll tell you what five are later in our later part of the talk but the sixth one which is a very important one is an industry mentorship so every student gets one personal mentor from the industry so if i am an hr student i write to him hey i have been working on hr dynamics and the new age practices of hr can i talk to you and the mentor and the mentee connect and they work on it hmm. i mean gone are the days where industry used to take a student on board and says one year tumko training denge भैया तुमको और क्या आता है एच आर में एंड दैट्स हाउ दे वॉन्ट द पर्सन टू कम ऑन बोर्ड सो द इंडस्ट्री एंड द इंस्टीट्यूशन वर्किंग टूगेदर सो वी डू हैव सेवन मॉडल्स ऑफ सच वर्किंग टूगेदर आई जस्ट नरेटेड टू ऑफ दैम सो वंस दीज प्रैक्टिस आर फॉलोड द गैप बिटवीन द इंडस्ट्री एंड इंस्टीट्यूट कम्स डाउन ड्रास्टिकली एंड द कोर्स दैट यू आर ऑफरिंग इज अ वेरी प्रैक्टिकल कोर्स सो two universities let me you know uh, share the example of two universities they do this you know at the at the first week with their students right so i feel that uh, if any uh, uh, institutions people academicians they are watching this they can learn from this example and there is a this is the, the case study published by harvard which says that within the first week of their admission they ask them to you know just close their eyes and they do this simulation exercise Okay, you whatever you are dreaming to become, then you just draw mm. this rather than writing in the words. They draw this, and where do you see you position yourself into that that particular <coughs> industry? This position is for me, and they keep this as a record, right? And once they complete their course, after ten years, they call all these people, their alumni meet and see, and they show them this is what you have drawn, and exactly these people are there. Lovely. 
so so uh, this is more of cognitive kind of thing you know when when and the the institutions and the academic the academicians they realize the importance of such activities especially in their institute i feel that that uh, institute this is a big success for the institute right so uh, uh, i think this yeah yeah very interesting example that you spoke about uh, visioning is what yeah. you you call it as and that's more important because you cannot you cannot lay a very and what i call uh, is two types of goal setting correct whether it is a bull's eye goal setting or it is a compass goal setting bull's eye goal setting is you know on my first day i am writing down saying that i need to be in this company with this ctc with this grade that is a very bull's eye goal setting Uh, vis a vis where uh, what the example that you gave is like a compass what's the direction that i want to go where i want to be yeah. because it's very very uh, by the time you complete in 5 years what you know of now would have changed um, i mean for sure yeah. right and 5 years is a big time now <laughs> <laughs> so another example you know i was conducting a session in one of the universities it is lecture <clears throat> i asked one guy you know Tell me what are you learning here? He said, "Sir, I am doing my MBA in finance." Okay, I said, "Fine, you are doing which year?" He said, "Sir, I am in the final year." Uh, okay, then what what do you really like to do? He said, "Sir, I would like to go to the marketing." Then I asked him, "Why is finance here?" There was no answer. He was point blank, you know, when I asked this question. So uh, why why this this you know or maybe over a period of time he might have seen someone who was very successful and influential and that is why you know my personal thing over a period of time you know the I develop you know, I always tell the faculties your your students they are they are having love for this particular subject not because of that subject because of the way you are teaching the kind of you know the methodology is the kind of this is what the seed you sow deep into their heart and they fall in love with that particular subject and then they decide. how i became trainer there was a trainer i saw that he was a very much successful and the way he he actually accelerated in his delivery and everything it was absolutely mesmerizing for me and i was just sitting there hey hey i should be like this why cannot i become like this and i i through my my attraction you know my pull towards that particular thing was has increased and that is why you know we just become today so there are many factors are here you know which is really important for us to understand now rajnikanth from you we would like to understand few learning strategies once someone joins the organizations which are very very helpful very good thank you pankaj for asking this i take the uh, uh, cue from uh, dr manish what he yeah. said like so as you said industry now don't want people to take and train so uh, really we want them to work on if possible on day one right so that's why uh, many of uh, corporates we send them like all the induction material make them whether skill based or any uh, quick orientation about they should not be uh, like uh, starting what is this new company sure. so Uh, uh since you are involving in their industry into the uh, institute like corporates also expect if they come a hr person comes or marketing comes, how quickly he takes charge so uh, the person to uh, maybe the pressures is like are you in tune with only academics or uh, what is expected out of you so few institutions uh like uh, this uh, how you are telling like they are preparing in advance so right and uh, another thing that comes to me uh, when uh, uh, coach ram was saying so i do have uh, associate with couple of uh, <laughs> universities as a board of studies member so i do give especially for uh, management school on the induction day give a talk so i said in some giving a talk i do something so I create a vision exercise, right? In the sense, I make them uh, give few minutes, like maybe thirty minutes. I ask them earlier. I started with those days with the chart. They have to make out uh, at the end of uh, second year uh, your graduation day. Just imagine, right? When you are stepping out, how you want to be. Now I ask them to make a two-minute video. Mm-hmm. and on day one induction everyone come and share and then put it so 
that gives a lot of direction many people as you said why you came you ask in the day one various reasons will be there some from business background they say that i want an mba or someone says that yeah this is the right course i thought and i still uh, don't have a clear idea about what specialization should be but this exercise made them to think right so uh, some of them said i i got placed in this company right i said keep watching this this will guide you in that direction so coming back uh, the industries uh, want our corporate want them to work on day one to your full potential that's what yeah I so so rajnikan even though that someone joins the organization right mm-hmm. and and making them you know the integral part of the system and making them realize that how your job is important for the growth of the organization right right so there are certain you know the techniques are there which i i feel that hr people uh, maybe you know the after talent acquisition we talks about talent management people lnd people need to really uh, imbibe into their own you know the system and the entire the progression of that particular person at the initial 3 months or maybe for the 6 months so that 3 to 6 month learning plan is really very very important true very see true. it's not what you expect from them but the um, important thing is what they expect from you Yeah, right yeah. so looking into this 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 gap especially and the, the changes what the generation is changing now the the thought process of gen z is completely different right you can't you know go with the old school of thought that the people will be continue here for 5 years or 10 years with you what are the few things i would like to learn it from uh, from ram what are the few things you feel is really important and if you can share with from your own example yeah see i uh, because you spoke about uh, Gen Z and now we are moving into alpha. Yeah. How people looked at uh, jobs, careers has evolved drastically. From a time when you know my father worked in an organization for uh, 35 years and retired, to I've I've worked in about uh, six seven organizations so far, <laughs> and I'm. so sure in first 6 years my son will work in 61 organizations <laughs> right so true. very true you are uh, the concept of okay come settle 6 months probation learn gone those are all gone that's on one side even we are saying that we want them to come join one week get on with it etc and <clears throat> a new term has uh, gained more prominence recently called purpose and for me i feel uh, purpose is at the core of uh, talent engagement and performance management right you tell a guy and a lot of people have problem with uh, gen z alpha saying you know they are careless they don't care and all of those things all that is stemming because you are not thinking like them True. and they don't bother to think what you think of them exactly very right. right very right so it's about how do you appeal to them saying why you are doing what you are doing and how is that helping the organization right it's not about smart goals etc but if they if they find some purpose they are on it you are asking me to do this because of this and this is going to lead to this impact they'll surprise you with what they are they are capable of I'll give you an example on this. Yeah, please. They'll surprise you on what they are. He said, "Okay." So let me give you a classic example, which is going on in ISBR. ISBR two months ago thought of starting a senior citizen school. Okay. okay. So I had my senior most team who were uh, not involved in many other things, and I spoke about senior citizen school. They came out in one week with a plan of action, and when I looked at it, it looked like it may not work. So then I had my son. who had just completed 12th gen z and i told him about the senior citizen school idea he is very right huh? the purpose if it sticks to them they have done it they will do it he said daddy i have like this idea he took up the plan and he said daddy i'll do it my way within one week he recruited 10 more gen z people 12 standard all saint josephites they came together they started in a team there was no head there was no lower in you know, a position they divided the jobs and they created a master plan of a senior citizen school within the first 30 days this institution isbr saw 
108 senior citizens who joined this school the first plan said it will take 6 months to execute these people in 30th day made 100 plus senior citizens join the school and come together from all parts That's of it. bangalore after that they went to the second stage they created a program a detailed program on the senior citizen school and 30 people 30 senior citizen paid up for this program and they are undergoing this program at isbr now oh, wow. and in another 1 2 3 4 5 6 weeks from now you will see the first graduation day of the senior citizens wow. now this Fantastic. is run by a gen z idea would be by the institution is a different matter but it is run by a complete gen z student and the senior citizens are loving it i mean a senior citizen being mentored by a gen z ah, i am just adding to what he say. said if they have taken it on a purpose and if they have they have liked it i mean then there's no stopping them I, you I you need to i to share here something which is which is very very you know prominent here at this point of time so uh, there is a uh, a question that that why someone really works you know what make them to work is it really food or something else so the answer is the purpose yeah and and there is yeah. a book written by mihai chikzen mihai the name of the book is called the flow right he said that when somebody is working for the purpose then the state of flow and and which is the most productive you know the the state of for anyone to perform where somebody really forget his his or her own identity itself because you are into that particular thing you don't remember that you are feeling hungry you don't remember you are feeling thirsty you don't remember who are the people waiting for you you don't remember what is your next assignment is yes. so so this is what you know the what drive people to work organization or especially you know the corporates they can show them the purpose of working them that is why are you keeping them inclusive into the into the organization are you showing them that how your job is really important yeah so there there this is this relationship is really you know very much important and where uh, the reverse mentoring what you you just shared you know yes. that the teaching to the older this this is the should be the culture even in the organization also Yeah. So there is a lady in 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 London. She her name is called uh, 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 Jane Hart. She runs a center of performance there, and uh, she is working on the concept from last many years. That is called the workplace learning (WPL). She said that that in a, each and every organization, once someone enters here, the organizational learning which keeps him or her on the track. Right. Right. So this is called the workplace learning, you know, which is the the emerging concept in India. Yeah. No people are started, you know, imbibing. Yeah. Now, uh, adding yeah, to please. what Pankaj said, right? I hope you all aware about uh, the book called the Ikigai. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The purpose. Of so uh, one exclusive chapter is on flow, yeah. right? So how you bring out? Is it possible? So I, I'm doing uh, being a psychometric assessor and things like that, especially to develop the potential. So I'm trying to find out, especially for the students. Yeah. So, is there a way to find out, uh, right, the flow of yours, where it occurs? If, if it uh, starts at the earlier stage of your career, yeah. and uh, of course, it can take you to the uh, yeah, so, whatever level. So, so Rajni Gandhi, I have a question for you. Yeah. Now, how how you you are an ICF certified coach, right? Yeah. So, how this coaching really helps one someone in the organization? Uh, is it really the the their own manager and the reporting manager will help them to understand and discover their 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 purpose, or is there is something you know which is very much needed that the external ICF certified coach or maybe PCC or ACC will help them? Can you share something on this from your own example? Because in the internal organization, you must have coached so many people. Yeah. 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 Okay, in in the context, I I divide this question into two parts. One for the freshers and who are coming up, right? So uh, many uh, companies uh, like they might have a buddy program to make them quickly get into, and then little deeper once they get into the focused uh, training and focused uh, job and all, like uh, they have a mentoring program. So uh, that happens really. as you said like even uh, all of you might be aware like reverse mentoring is happening right True. so what you told as a example is actually it's a reverse mentoring yeah right uh, zen z is uh, teaching and it it's not teaching it's in the way you get it right True. so True. coming to the coaching side yes 
uh, i would say in this context uh, every manager every leader should be a coach not necessarily the icf or any mcc apc certification yeah. right uh, what are the few coaching competencies right i would say only one first right the deep listening active listening so we do focus on leaders on this one uh, when your team members or fellow or the senior is speaking like would you be able to uh, listen 100% yeah. that will turn all other coaching competencies sorry what you said this is what the reply of the people when they don't listen exactly <laughs> even this is what one of the one of the biggest you know the yes. ability or a quality of a leader yes if if someone is coming with their own problem and a small or big issue and you are into your own world exactly right you cut off from everywhere you know and give your complete attention you know your entire whatever the best cognitive ability you have put it there with the people yes. and i am always teaching this in my emotional intelligence workshop look at into their eyes and and and, and say mm mm-hmm. ha ha oh point how did it happen is it happen really oh it means if if you can travel with that person into those moments of thoughts what they are sharing Correct. you win that person you will be the most closest person to win that particular uh, you know that 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 issue yeah so that is why listening is one of the most important skill and, and i remember in one of my organization we conducted 15 days workshop only on listening can you think about 15 days only talking about listening various aspect of listening important small small simulation exercise only on listening and it was so powerful you know after that and this is what you know the organization probably need to train their leaders yes. to become a very good listener yes. right yes. so uh, coming to dr manish he is one of the very good listener i take whatever interaction we had you know uh, so i remember i was coming uh, uh, getting down from the flight and we yeah. met over there you yeah. know, getting in the bus to come to the that, that place and then uh, uh, we said that hey we met somewhere then we were able to recognize that we met in one of the event and when i was started sharing he was absolutely with me mm-hmm. yes i i was able to see you are even still i remember yes. your your expression and everything how do you do you as a as a as a uh, academician as a person you you develop what do you do especially and if you can share uh, to other people also so that they can become a you know level next in terms of their listening ability okay uh of course uh, none of us would disagree that listening is an art is a skill and if you want to become a successful leader you have to listen if you want to grow up in life you have to create a team and you have to create a team of successful people and you can create a team of successful people only when you have the heart courage and mind to listen to them and the moment you listen to them they express and the moment your team has expressed and you have been able to listen to them and either guide them mold them or just say a yes to them the team raises up on the occasion to the occasion and then scales up so art of listening i think it comes by time it comes by passion it comes by your interest in the other person and the moment you have passionate towards a common goal then the art of listening automatically comes a good leader listens first and then takes things forward of course there are so many ways of learning the art of listening it could just not be done over a, a single podcast but then there are courses there are ways you have to get into the heart or uh, the habit of getting into yoga i mean indian systems are so good that right from the time you are born your parents your elders makes you listen and they make you listen so much that is an inbuilt <laughs> capability of indians to see that they are good listeners so all those seeing this podcast and spending time on us i'm telling you are good listeners there yeah. and that is why they have spent time on this so yeah listening is an art and if whatever success we would all have seen is because we are good listeners and we give time to our people one 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 dimension i would like to bring there when it comes to listening <coughs> uh two words that uh, stand out compliance and commitment when you said you know from the childhood we are uh, trained to listen yeah we comply yeah we comply you're very right the elder i should listen to you i comply but you don't have my commitment and similarly even in organizations by authority by 
seniority etc you may have my compliance i think this is what needs to be done this is how you do, you do it you may have my compliance but when do you get the commitment you get the commitment when i feel you heard me when True. i feel you understood me and we have that uh, resonance and when that uh, vibe that resonance happens then you have me true and the example that he spoke about uh, your son where he said okay i get this compliance it resonated less commitment ha uh, very right i agree to it if it was only compliance it was yes yes okay, yes okay dad i'll do it for yeah, you yeah and then it would never have seen result i mean i agree to this and uh, i want to add uh, another dimension so the biggest challenge for listening everyone wants to listen right of course uh, right biggest challenge is the distraction and the digital distraction right so a manager wants to listen but when the other person is there if as he said like if you are a good leader first try to listen true. right true so how he is not taking out from the face from you that you are there you yeah. came to meet me uh, and then i answer uh, a mail and then my mobile pops up ha ha pakka cha continue mm. so i'm ensuring that i am listening yeah yeah i am listening there are people yeah. that's not actually if you want to give importance right you just close up right if you are so busy you can say that i am busy can we meet little later right the moment i give time switch off everything now yeah, okay fine let's look at it yeah. so that makes a lot of difference to the other person yeah. i would say here the small little kid if you see the 3 year 4 year 5 year kid they will want that mama to listen they turn their face like mama look at me pop daddy look pop look at is that right you know you know that's so, also now my question to ram ram how as an hr as an hr you know we we make our people to be a good leader and uh, inculcate certain you know the the qualities into the leader what kind of uh, programs or what kind of courses would you like to suggest it's a it's a mindset it's not a skill it's not a capability to be built but it is about mindset as long as i am wired to think of me i me myself i will not think about investing in others and to developing others never as long as the system around me the organization around me is rewarding me for individual performance why would i even focus on thinking about others and you know building others uh, and when you start doing that you are encouraging more and more of silos uh, working and that's where so much of training around team work but teams don't work together <laughs> that's because by design you are telling uh, work together as work a team together, but i'll yeah. evaluate you as individuals come on not we are not happening so the uh, for it to become a culture and a movement it's a mindset within those uh, leaders to believe that i am not working just for myself but i am working for the larger uh, entity right the latest example uh, i don't know how true or false it is but i heard a statement from uh, ravindra jadeja where he said uh, i don't think i'm performing up to the mark in this world cup i am happy if uh, the team decides to exclude me and give my place to someone else uh, sounds like a large hearted statement exactly yeah so uh, while fact check needs to be done but if someone is able to think like that it's because the system has given that security to him saying you know you, it's not survival of the fittest you are not fighting among each other the larger purpose is you are part of a world cup team and we need yeah. to win the world cup this is a team of 15 that has come together it is not in, it is not 11 individuals who are fighting for glory right so it's that leadership mindset and that's where we talk about culture captain coach all of them are working towards and you've seen how uh, some players who are brilliant in one team take an example of uh, rohit sharma and hardik pandya their story in mumbai indians vis-a-vis how they are performing for india 
two different stories absolutely different and stories. same individuals same individuals same capabilities i'm sure even in uh, for mumbai indians they wanted to play they wanted yeah. to do well but the whole game changes when the purpose is very different so it's that it's that mindset that you need to cultivate with the leaders um that can positively energize the entire ecosystem wonderful uh, another important question uh, from this wonderful nugget for hr people to learn i would like to talk to now author ram okay yeah. <laughs> share few few tools and techniques which you mentioned in this wonderful thing you know uh, which will be very very helpful for our hr yeah so firstly this book is uh, uh, aimed at yeah this book is aimed at everyone not just uh, hr colleagues true aimed at everyone who wants to advance in their career everyone has a different concept of their concept of career i think one uh, one aspect that uh, really struck me is uh, one of the chapters that i love is manufacturing your luck manufacturing your luck Uh, I talk about uh, you know we say dhoni is lucky yeah, i'm right. sure we are right of and and we have seen lot of instances like that we say oh my god this fellow is a blue eyed guy he is favorite and he is growing and mm-hmm. stuff like that so we tend to associate luck as something that happens to us mm-hmm. right but uh, over whatever i have uh, studied and what i my lived experience you can manufacture your luck it is about uh it's just not about being in the right place at the right time right uh there are there is a specific intent that you demonstrate uh skills that you portray that will provide you those opportunities so there are uh, you know uh, eight steps on how to manufacture your luck that's something that i have uh, written in this book and um personal board of directors like you know manish was uh, yeah, referring pbod to pbod right it's you you don't have uh, especially and and i love the example that you gave about uh, msmes yeah right and the parallel that i draw and uh, what i uh, the specific target group to whom i wrote this book see if you have passed out of i am and you know uh, you are in pedigree and you are flying and there there is an ecosystem that is taking care of you right but if you are if you fortunately or unfortunately not part of the top 1% cream then you are making your own journey how long should i stay whom should i approach placement what should be my second job which one should i choose how do i grow in my career should i switch fields how do i get greater exposure like he said he is running a university and um, he also has a windmill yeah. right so you you diversify yourself you True. grow as a professional by doing multiple things and that you get from uh, these personal board of directors who give you different uh, perspectives right you have a mentor and part of that personal board of directors is you have a mentor you have uh, someone who is an industry expert you have someone who is a constant cheerleader for you who is constantly supporting you no matter what you have a constant critique otherwise you are in a echo chamber true right and like we say right you know at conferences we keep bumping into each other and we are like oh yeah we are doing great we are doing great and another thing that i say is I I so want to see a non HR people in a HR conference. <laughs> Because you have HR folks talking about hey wow what, what does HR need what is the future etc etc uh, whereas you you don't you don't have a you don't have diversity there because you're talking among HR people to right? bring in a CEO there and then the story completely changes. Right? Ah, so some of those aspects of how do you bring diversity in your uh, experience when people talk to me um i say i, I don't say it's about uh, i have 20 years of experience uh in my in my summary i have written 20 experiences that i've had in my 20 year journey right experience of setting up a team experience of laying off a team experience of uh, getting merged into a larger entity experience of coming out from a larger entity to a smaller entity experience of going through a recession right so these are experiences that you uh, count on build on and yeah. learn from so a lot of those nuggets is what is the uh, in the book uh, like i said aimed at someone uh, probably in the last year of their uh, b school 
till about 10 15 years of experience how do i uh, how can i be intentional about my career and not let it happen by uh, chance how do you design your destiny and not go with the flow so there is a person called uh, naval ravikant uh, mm-hmm. what about mm-hmm. uh, naval ravikant is a angel investor sits in silicon valley yes and uh, his famous quote which has got the ever highest impression on uh, twitter x now and uh, which was how to get uh, uh, how to become rich without lucky without being lucky yeah and and there is a complete thread on it and still it is just one of the the most impression I have ever had you know on the x and he talks about many things you know about uh, the changing the technology how uh, behaviors are changing and he is one of the you know i i, I should say um, ideal person to listen you know over uh, a, a lot of podcasts are available on youtube also so uh, another podcast was the team paris show so you know if you can just listen this and i feel you know manish uh dr manish this is what you know people should really understand and learn from these people so that really changing the world right so exposing them to such an this is what the experience what uh, ramesh shared you know so in the in the premises of the management institutes and the colleges if such like minded people can come and share on their own experiences and this experience will further you know resonate with lot of experiences and people can take it along with them and this is what you know which is maybe the transformation uh, in the mind and heart of people we have see talks yeah. wherein the cxos ceos ctos mm-hmm. comes and talks to the students now of course sometimes it ends up with a talk yeah. so we have got one step ahead and we have master classes so we have master lectures wherein people like you the vice president of hp the author of uh, rahul dravid's book biography have all been a part of this institution to teach about 10 hours or one credit courses to the students and they work with the students deeply and that's what i think is required in today's journey of these youth people because Uh, you have to get in them to make it happen see isbr and business schools like us are places where things are happening gone are the days where the class of 60 was a class of 60 students together now a class of 60 has 60 different individuals because the career the different career spaces that are available for students are amazing hr was just one hr in the past now you have a recruitment specialist you have an exit interview specialist you have a performance appraisal specialist i mean hr by itself has got wide fields of specialists that are into it there are 10 to 12 sub functions oh yeah. amazing so you just see what is the type of change that you expect the faculty to do that is why it's very necessary that industry comes together and works with the student to happen Brilliant. Uh, so uh, wonderful to have the C talk. What you said. C stands for what? So here the C yeah. is either the CEO, CXO, okay. Chief oh. Technical Officer. Uh-huh. So anyone who has reached the stage, C suit. Yeah. Okay. Are the people who comes and talks to the student, including a CFO. So uh, and in fact they spend almost half a day on campus, and when they sign off the program, they the moment they are speaking to a student, they select four or five. meet them in the board room and then they make them the mentors when they move out and they observe how the student is progressing over a period of time so the c talk does not just end with the talk hmm ends with them taking someone on board and nurturing them to become the future leaders so it's a very well crafted designed program along with a few of the cxos together brilliant i think the institution needs to have more of such interest oh when they go they have signed their cups and kept in our library oh. you will see a series of such cups which are from the last 5 uh, years they have been there as memory so they when they come back they say that yes i was a part of this seep talk program here really nice. thanks for sharing this uh, very very helpful and great so great like set of great set of initiatives factory, right yeah. so uh, uh, right it's a, you, you are actually developing the leader which is what uh, so uh, we are running short of time so my last question second last is rather you know to rajnikanth how uh, lnd actually can make a difference in meeting meeting out the challenges what hr people face 
I'm, I'm looking at when I say uh, L&D, it's L&D for all, whatever uh, HR, marketing, finance yeah, yeah. and all that. So now, uh, as uh, you say that in the classroom 60, my employees are like, we can't have a group program. Like we do still have batch programs, like let's say leadership development, communication or uh, coaching for managers, all that. But still we need to address the individual development need, right? So uh, L&D now goes uh, like few steps <coughs> near to that, trying to do that more than as a push program, it's a pull mechanism. So I do have a choice to attend or take up any of the courses. It's not necessary that to do my job within the, say for example, if it is someone from finance or marketing, do only that, he may be doing a digital photography, right? You may be wondering what this person will do, but he'll bring that knowledge or that thing uh, into it in various other form. So now when he wants to have everything, wants to have touch, say for example, uh, like we do offer courses on AI, Right, it's not necessary for your function, but when you know that and it is easy for you to uh, go through your so uh, super personalization happens, yeah. right? And and you know many learning platforms and LMS also trying to give you that what is required for you mm-hmm. based on various services. So uh, a learning organization or the leading organization. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I recently, you know, I attended one of the you know big conference, international conference uh, from the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, independent director. So me being an independent director, I also asked this question to the people sitting on the board, right? And they said that that we are very much concerned about the learning plans of the people once they are there onboarding in the in the organization. So it's from um, hiring to hire to retire, you know, the entire thing. Once people are there, what are the plans are there for them? So absolutely, they are not only looking for uh, the final goal in the numbers, business numbers. You know, they are very much interested in terms of what you are giving them on the, on the on the job, right? So um, I, I hope uh, this was a meaningful discussion amongst you know, all four of us. At the end, uh, Dr. Manish, uh, big thanks to you. Oh, I, I would say just wait, let us not end. Let us ask the moderator a question and let the moderator answer also. So we'll have, I have one question for the moderator and then we'll wind up. And uh, This talk will not be complete unless we touch artificial intelligence, AI. So I would like to ask our friend, Artificial intelligence has started penetrating almost everything we do. In the field of HR, what is the impact of AI? What is the changes that it has made to the job of the world of the new HR aspirators? And what care should be taken? Or what skills do they have to work upon to see that they get a career of their choice in future or they don't hamper their career in future? So a very you know wonderful question I should say. So I was talking. So oh, there's an amazing moderator, and I know you have a knowledge in this. So I didn't want you to leave it here. So I was talking to uh, someone from uh, Geo, and he's the chief uh, HR officer of Geo, Harjit Khanuja. And he said that Pankaj, you know, you tell me, you know, if uh, Uber need to onboard someone, do they have you know the entire HR team to onboard someone? Absolutely no. Question, yeah. If Ola, Uber, and this company here, BNB, you know, how do they onboard a certain thing? So, uh, as we all know, that anything which is repetitive in nature can be very well, you know, uh, substituted True. by AI. Now, certain skills, you know, uh, so this is what the impact of AI, which will going to touch each and every, you know, function in in an organization. And HR is one of the most important, which will be going to be uh, hit very, very, very vastly in India. Yeah. So, uh, are you preparing for tomorrow? Are you preparing for the skills like coaching, what uh, you said, the skills like emotional intelligence, the skills like mentoring, they still require a people, you know, and which is absolutely, I would say, at this point of time, is difficult to replace by, by, by AI, right? Uh, are you really understanding and learning about uh, the AI? 
what you said that you prepare rajni that uh, rajni khan that uh, chatbot especially that uh, what people really wanted to ask about which is the next program so they can put in the chat box and automatically from the calendar they will pick up what is the next training program on the communication skills what is the next training program on the coaching emotional intelligence and all this so they will pop up and give help help them so my just only thing is that that are you really keep on learning yeah so if it is ai learn about ai you may not be required to do actually coding so there are lot of tools are available like no code is available you need to just assemble pick and True. no format uh, build the format and you can build your own chatbot but are you aware about these these tricks and the tools available nowadays right so uh, the continuous learning is, is 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 the only way i don't feel that i am from hr side i may not be you know very good in this all this technology kind of thing they are they are as simple as what you can think about hr because hr was also alien you know once when you were out of hr and you were thinking to become a, you know the hr leader or something so anything looks scary you know uh, so i i always said that anything which you are learning it looks difficult at the beginning messy in the middle and fruitful at the end right true so so uh, have that that mindset you know which will possibly take you to the to the path of progression and the growth and uh, this is what you know i, I, I hope that i justify the <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i'll just add to it yeah uh because when when i hear people talking uh, ai is going to hit us yeah true and uh, at least the present generations yes. are thinking about it you're right yeah so the connotation of hitting us is that something uh, you know uh, not good is happening to us negative, negative negative it's a negative connotation i feel ai is going to be a great multiplier true a supporting tool a supporting tool ai is not going to take away any of the like i said we have you know 10 to 12 sub functions within hr ai is not going to take away any of these all the functions will remain you know the functions will get remodeled etc etc the jobs are not going away there is an ai layer that comes on all these jobs the way i do talent acquisition is going to be is going to be very very different very nice earlier we had three rounds of interview you write a test then you do a group discussion then a personal interview then now it's very different by the time you apply on the careers portal the ai will out of 1000 ah, profiles yeah, yeah. ai will tell who are the 10 profiles who are closer who deserve your attention time and attention right so it has cut down a lot of administrative work so but it has increased the effectiveness of your uh, hiring process similarly you know be it talent engagement performance management across all levels ai is go- is a multiplier effect it's not something that you uh, uh that you should be scared of it's something that you should embrace learning agility is the key and uh, people who will get ahead are the ones who embrace yes. ai people who lag behind are the ones who uh, are skeptics of ai or you know uh, even detractors of ai they are the ones who will fall behind so i take it as ai is your friend Absolutely. and access it and make it your best friend absolutely yes, that's so, i just want to add one more thing <laughs> for your curious person so as you said the younger generation look at like uh, ai will uh, replace all the jobs i may not be getting so uh, it's not that way i'm looking at ai will not replace your job but the person learns or knows ai will replace your job sure. so the idea is you how quick it's not about uh, uh, learning ai means uh, how to code in the ai how you apply the ai in your domain right so uh, like that so sometime back if you look at late 90s when computers were introduced right i still remember aptech na uh, uh, nit and all like they were uh bank people working in bank they said that they are sure. all going to replace it's not that if you learn that you are there and people who have not learned picked up and uh, insurance companies bank companies they send them out yeah go and, and learn and come if you certify that and then so similarly if today in the context whatever be your uh, domain finance marketing hr you should learn the application of ai in your area then you are the key yeah so business schools 
have already like ISBR have applied AI across all the courses and how it is going to affect that student and the student needs to have the application part of AI in their work. So it is necessary I think this team and teams like us work together to really make the next generations be ready and fit for the organizations and the corporates in future. I would like to say here the, the, the saying that the master jack of all and master of none. Yeah. It is replaced now jack of all and master of one. If you are doing MBA in HR, be a master of HR, but have a knowledge of AI, have a knowledge of Web3, have a knowledge of what the things are changing in, in and around you. Right? So I will sum up this podcast. Right? Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Manish, thank you so much for uh, inviting all of thank us you. in the wonderful campus of ISBR. Thank you. And thank you so much, Ajnikan. It was, it seems to be, you know, earlier, you know, the very unknown podcast, but I hope it's... <laughs> now I would say it's, I, I love yeah, it. I, I, yeah, it's we, we should in fact name this as a surprise podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was one, but all of us are the surprise people. Free flow podcast. <laughs> and Ram, thank you so much for uh, being much. here at the very short notice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Great. If you are learning from this Thank podcast, you. please share your three learnings in the comment box and keep watching the Left Talk Show. Thank you so much.